Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video I'm going to be looking at the free agency of Kyrie Irving and it's certainly an interesting one to talk about. This is part of a series where I'm going to be going through some of the biggest free agency decisions around the league one by one and this is the second episode in that series and in the first one I covered Kemba Walker. You can check that out on screen here if you missed it. Really quickly though before we get started I do want to mention that the Sporting Logically podcast has returned and I'll leave a link down in the description to that. The first episode back just went up. A Funky Diabetic and I talked about Game 3 of the Finals, looking towards Game 4, a little bit of free agency stuff, uh, and just a couple of other random tidbits around the league. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave the links to both iTunes as well as Spotify in the description below. Okay, now let's talk about Kyrie Irving's free agency. And like I said, this is going to be a very interesting situation that's going to continue to develop over the next couple of weeks here before we get to the actual start of free agency on the 30th. So some context here, Kyrie Irving statistically had a very good season with the Celtics this past year, uh, but there were a lot of just different chemistry issues and personality problems, and the team just never really gelled and certainly underperformed based off what people expected them to do before the season. He holds a player option for next year that he's going to decline, and it doesn't really seem like the Celtics are all that optimistic about him returning, and it doesn't seem like he's all that excited about the possibility either. Now, obviously that is from reports, that's not from actually talking to Kyrie Irving, but in recent comments, Celtics GM Danny Ainge has seemed a bit subdued in terms of how optimistic he is that Kyrie will actually return. So I'm gonna go through some of the teams that are options for Kyrie one by one, and then I'm gonna come back to the Celtics at the end, and we're gonna begin with the New York Knicks. Obviously the positives here are the ability to play in New York, that's something that could be a big deal to Kyrie potentially, and then he could also be pairing with another star free agent, the pairing that continues to be rumored is him and Kevin Rant potentially signing in New York, both on max contracts. The Knicks have the cap space to be able to do that, and they also have some young assets that could either complement Kyrie and KD or Kyrie and whoever else he might want to play with in New York, or they could obviously make a deal uh, and trade for someone like Anthony Davis or Bradley Beal as well to continue to strengthen that roster around their core. And one thing that we do know about Kyrie is one of the reasons why he was upset and ended up deciding to leave Cleveland is one, there were rumors that they were going to end up trading him in two. He kind of wanted to be the guy and he could get that opportunity in New York depending on who he teams up with. Obviously, if it's Kevin Durant that he teams up with and he's not going to be the guy, but the possibility does at least exist as a positive for him in terms of potentially going to New York. Now, in terms of the cons, he would need to kind of put his free agency together with another player to really create a situation that's better than what he just had in Boston. Even with everything that went on with the Celtics, and I'll talk about this later, they still have a very, very good team to build around on paper if they can get their chemistry together. So for it to really be worth it from a basketball perspective for Kyrie to leave the Celtics to go to the Knicks, he would need another star to come with them. If it's just him and the young guys next year, like Kevin Knox and Mitchell Robinson and whoever they pick with the third pick, I don't really think that gets it done in terms of being one of the true threats in the Eastern Conference. They might be a fun team, but might not necessarily be the most competitive one either. And then on the other hand, even if he did manage to get another max contract player to sign there, obviously that would be a great situation, but he wouldn't necessarily be the guy, which again has been something that apparently has been an issue for him in the past as something that he has desired. And then lastly with the Knicks, you do always need to talk about the history of organizational issues with them. It seems like they've been corrected a little bit in the post Phil Jackson era, but they still have ownership issues in terms of James Nolan just not being a very good owner and, and just causing some dysfunction there. Uh, David Fisdale looks to be a pretty good coach for them long term and the front office looks like they've kind of gotten things together, but it's still, in my opinion, is something that needs to be considered. But in the end, even with pros and cons, the Knicks would be a pretty good choice for Kyrie and they do have a pretty good situation to offer him. Moving on now to a team that's been in the news a little bit more recently as it relates to Kyrie and that is the Brooklyn Nets. Some positives, he'd get to play in New York, he'd get to play in Brooklyn. Uh, he'd also already have some really good complimentary options there to play with guys like Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jared Allen. They'd be able to keep all of those guys and then also sign Kyrie and then potentially also have the ability, uh, the opportunity at least to pair with D'Angelo Russell in the backcourt if that is the route that the Nets ended up going. And then on the other hand, they do have the ability to bring in another max contract player to play alongside Kyrie, just like the Knicks do. But the problem is they kind of have to make some moves to be able to make that work. They'd have to trade away Alan Crabb's expiring contract. And then D'Angelo Russell would either have to be signed to another team. They wouldn't be able to bring him back or he'd be signed and traded somewhere else. But again, even with that, he wouldn't necessarily have to package 
his free agency along with another star to create a competitive team because they would still have D'Angelo Russell and the young guys that I talked about earlier, in addition to Kyrie, that have the ability to just re-sign D'Lo and then run it back with the same group as last year, plus Kyrie, which in my opinion would be a very competitive and very fun team, even though there are some backcourt issues with Kyrie and D'Lo that I'll talk about later. Now, in terms of negatives, just adding Kyrie to this Nets team, even assuming that D'Angelo Russell gets re-signed, doesn't necessarily make it a better situation than what he's leaving Boston. I still think that on paper, this is a very, very good Celtics team with Kyrie Irving there, and even honestly without him there. Uh, and it's a situation that I wouldn't be so quick to leave if I was him, even when you consider that the Nets do have a really good foundation, they have some good complimentary players and young players at that, but I still don't necessarily think it would be a better situation from a basketball perspective to leave in the current situation the Nets are in. Now, if they were able to bring in a second max player and then keep some of those complimentary options, then that'd be a different conversation. But just as they're currently constructed, I don't think they would be a better basketball situation than the Celtics. So as a result, in terms of a negative, he would have to package his free agency, in my opinion, to create a better situation in Brooklyn. And he'd also have to convince Kevin Durant to come with him because it seems like most of Kevin Durant's focus has been on joining the Knicks. And up to this point, that's what we thought it was for Kyrie as well. But potentially he would have the opportunity to do the exact same thing in Brooklyn. It's just about Kyrie convincing him to do so. And then, like I said, the Nets do have to make a few moves to create those two max contract slots if that was the route they decided to go in. So that is another negative that they don't just have two maxes like the Knicks do straight away. But in the end, the Nets are another really, really interesting opportunity for Kyrie Irving in free agency among a few of them. And the next up is a team that I'm going to briefly cover because they have been in some rumors as it relates to Kyrie, but I don't think they're a realistic option, and that's the LA Lakers. And the biggest issue here is that this is a very similar situation to one that Kyrie wanted to get away from in Cleveland in the first place. Like I said, there were some rumors that Kyrie heard that he was talking about, or the organization was talking about trading him, and that pissed him off, and that caused him to want to leave. But if you take that out of the equation, the situation he'd be going into in LA would be very similar to what he had in Cleveland. He has LeBron, so he wouldn't be the guy. Their relationship might not be the best, and that was apparently also a reason that he wanted to end up leaving Cleveland. And there's a ton of organizational dysfunction there, just as there was in Cleveland as well at times. So I really, really, really would be extremely surprised if he did end up signing in LA and really... I'm not even considering them a legit possibility. I just felt the need to address them in this video because someone would say in the comment section, why didn't I talk about the Lakers? But again, not a realistic possibility in my opinion. And that brings us all the way back around to the Boston Celtics. Now, here's the deal. D despite everything else going on with the Celtics team, and it, was, it's not, it wasn't a good season, right? Like they did not play nearly as well as they were supposed to. It was a ton of drama, which is kind of weird for this franchise. It's not something they're typically about. I still think that they have the best basketball situation for Kyrie Irving unless either Brooklyn or New York ends up getting two max contract players in free agency, Kyrie, and then one other player in addition. In any other scenario, Boston still has the best basketball situation, and you could honestly probably make an argument that even then they still have the best situation unless you start throwing in an AD trade or something to Brooklyn or New York. And some of the issues that they had last year with chemistry and personalities could potentially be solved Next year, Terry Rozier is very, very likely to end up on a different team next year, so that could help them. And Kyrie might just say, hey, I screwed up. I made some mistakes. We all made mistakes last year. I want to come back. I want to try and make it right. And if that happens, I still think that the Celtics can be a really, really good team and a threat in the Eastern Conference with Kyrie Irving on their roster. The problem is, what if it all goes wrong again? That's got to be in the back of his mind when he's considering the Celtics and might be one of the reasons that apparently they're not that big of a consideration is the likelihood that once again next year, things just completely go off the rails again and this team just can't mesh together with Kyrie Irving on the roster. So in the end, even though I think it's a really good basketball situation, like I've continued to say, I don't really think it's all that likely that he ends up staying in Boston and realistically will probably be in either New York or Brooklyn, potentially with another max level player. And all these things just go into, again, one of the most interesting free agency situations across the league because Kyrie is just historically been so difficult to read and try and figure out exactly what he's thinking. But in the end, in terms of my prediction, I can't really decide between whether I think he's going to go to New York or Brooklyn because it depends on what other guys do. I think if KD commits and says, hey, I'm going to go to New York, I think that's pretty tough for Kyrie to turn down to go to New York and play with Kevin Durant, assuming he's okay being the second guy and then playing with the younger guys or potentially getting an Anthony Davis trade. 
But if KD either isn't committed to New York or he doesn't know, or he wants to come with Kyrie to Brooklyn, I think that's a really intriguing option as well. So right now, I'd probably say that I think he's going to end up in New York over Brooklyn, um, but it's really, 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 really close. Like if I had to rank it, I would put it Knicks, Nets, and then somewhere down here, Celtics, and then all the way at the floor would be the Lakers. So that would be my opinion as of right now, as of uh, four weeks in advance of free agency, but we will have to see what happens. But once again, my name is Tucker. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That is going to be the end of it. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen and be on the lookout for more videos just like this going over the free agency situations of some of the best players across the league. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.